Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Nick. I'm pumped to be here. Yeah, we're super excited. As we always do to start the show, would you mind giving our listeners the 411 on who you are and what you're bringing to the platform today? Yeah, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a biochemist, a registered dietitian. Uh, I have a book coming out called The Energy Formula at energyformula.com. Uh, I do stuff on Instagram, Facebook, on education with keto, with supplements, with biohacking, all that kind of fun stuff. Um, but my day job is, uh, is patenting novel ingredients and, and getting those out into the world. And I've been known as the world's greatest formulator. I've formulated over 500 products out on the market, and I've patented uh, more than 10 ingredients, including tea cream and dynamine that are in hundreds of products that are probably the most popular branded energy ingredients after caffeine. Wow. So, so you a vast uh, amount of experience is what it sounds like. Yeah. Yeah. And I actually, at one point I worked uh, clinically as a chief clinical dietitian in hospitals and nursing homes for about 10 years, but, uh, really supplements kind of took over my life and that's when I kind of went out on my own uh, after a, a corporate stint with a couple big companies, helping some companies go to sale in the supplement space uh, for acquisition. And, uh, and then I went on to do my own thing. So when you went out on your own, what, um, what was the first couple of things that, that you did that were successful when you went out on your own? Uh, that was mostly doing formulations for a number of companies, doing the marketing, not, not just the scientific part, that's a part of what I do uh, is, is the science and, and knowing what ingredients work on what mechanism of action and how they're complementary, all those kinds of things. But I also, because of my business perspective, my acumen, uh, that I know how to build the hero's journey around one of the key ingredients, wow. that I know how to you know, tell the story of the supportive nutrients in there. I know how to do the sourcing and the regulatory and the packaging so that those things come together. And I certainly know how to, you know, meet an ideal price point and margin. So, you know, I think that for those reasons, uh, all of those pieces coming together was, was a reason I was highly sought after. So everything you just mentioned, where did you learn the, the business background side of it? Well, my undergrad was at Babson uh, Business Specialty School, uh, and I did marketing, business administration, and uh, information systems, IT. Uh, and then from there, I went on to get my master's in nutritional biochemistry at UNC Chapel Hill. So it was a little bit of a shift, uh, thanks to a doctor that I saw when I was going to Babson, and I told him about this cool thing that I was doing with working out and taking supplements like creatine and protein and seeing all these benefits. And he literally stopped, went out of his way to draw out this lifeline for me between 20 and 80. I was 20 at the time doing my undergrad. And he said, why not be happy between here and here? Mm. And it completely shifted my life. I did finish up my degree but I spent about two years getting all the prereqs I needed uh, down in North Carolina and then getting into Chapel Hill and, and finishing up my master's there. So it took a lot of time, but he gave me the license to go chase my passion. And while I was good at business and, and I was getting great grades, I finished up magna cum laude at Babson, but it was really me being able to have the freedom to chase this dream and for me to like to become known as the world's greatest formulator in the industry like none of that would have happened unless this guy told me that like it's just the power of words like wow. he created me he literally created me and i would have never known the passion that i have for what i do without that guy yeah, that, that, that has a, just a special kind of twist to it, I think. Like, have you ever got a chance to tell him that after I've, the fact? I've, yeah, 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 exactly. Yes, I definitely did. Uh, I've reached out to him and, and let him know how, how profound it's, it's been for me. And, and he definitely took great pleasure in that. But like that wasn't even, you know, something that he expected or, or you know, knew would happen. But 
it was in and i expected him to just say you know supplements are dumb like a doctor would about 25 years ago you know but for him to see me in kind of a, a vulnerable intimate way and like kind of see the the desire the fire that i had and the change that was happening within me because uh, up until then i i had really fought um you know, being overweight and being bullied most of my life. And um, this created something for me to, to have a, a point of pride and then, and then create change and then also help others with, with those changes. And um, for him to see that and, you know, tell me to essentially go chase my dreams. And it's very different from someone like, you know, the, the hippie guy that's like, hey, bro, go chase your dreams, bro. You know, like that would have like done nothing for me at the time. But like this guy who's a medical doctor who, you know, at the time to me is like as high as it gets in terms of esteem for him to tell me this. I was like, wow, yeah, I'm going to really think on this. This is crazy that he saw me like that. I didn't know I even wanted to do that. You know, it's like he just saw me like that, which is powerful. Yeah, there's a. I'm sure there's a transfer of energy at that point too. You know, his his uh, energy to, to you, and, and you know the positive energy, and kind of maybe full circle of where you are now. And, and uh, can you tell us about the the newest project that you're working on? Well, you know, I like before I get to that one one interesting flip to that is that when I went to UNC Greensboro, my parents are down in North Carolina, and my dream school was Chapel Hill for my masters. I ended up going to UNCG to try and get all the prereqs I needed, about two years worth of sciences to just get into Chapel Hill. I talked to this guidance counselor and he laughed at me. He said, you're a business student, you'll fail and you'll fail miserably. It's 26 credit hours of sciences a semester with labs. And by the way, you're not in very good shape. And I literally uh, had a bottle of vodka and pills that night and almost killed myself because for two years I was holding on to this dream that I thought was so intimately mine. And this guy essentially was ready to rip it away. And again, he didn't have any idea of, of the power of his words. He didn't oh. know that he could destroy dreams. He didn't know that he could literally kill someone. Um, and so that was, that was another powerful, again, <laughs> lesson on on the, the power of words and uh and luckily i did not do that and it strengthened my resolve over a series of days of really wrestling with it um and i ended up you know doing quite well and, and getting straight a's and being able to get into chapel hill but almost like a hatred fueled me for a couple of years while i was getting those classes like trying to prove that guy wrong um but that is something to be mindful of <laughs> Yeah. Uh, as for like what I'm doing now, um, really, really cool stuff. So I have a partner in China that has a 400,000 square foot facility that's GMP, uh, good manufacturing practices. That means like it's the best, you know, kind of quality and it's and there's oversight. And he has a hundred scientists that work with him and we create ingredients together. And I also work with two German scientists that are uh, brilliant organic chemists and work on intellectual property and study design. And this is like my team. It's like an incredible dream team. And so I come up with all these crazy ideas and run it by the group. And then we get some of these things made. And like, for example, like one of the ingredients that uh, we've just brought to market is uh, an ingredient called mitoburn that is the amino acid L-BABA. And it's an exercise mimetic, meaning it mimics exercise. So when your body is going through intense exercise, your muscle uh, breaks down, the, the, the branch chain amino acids in your muscle break down the specifically L-valine to make this BABA, L-BABA. And it's a signal to your body that your body's working out hard. And literally like a holy grail, like no joke of like all the things that are associated with intense exercise, improve uh, oxygen capacity, improve muscle mass, improve 
endurance, improved bone mass, improved brain function, all these kinds of things improve with higher levels of beba. So this is like literally a holy grail of ingredients. And, and I'm so excited. Like that's one of many I've brought out. And so it's really fun that I get to research all this stuff, dream up things. And then I have people that can help me bring it to reality. So really you're starting to live out your passion, really. Like you've got the right team behind you. So pretty much you can come up with any idea as a, uh, could be a, a far out idea or an idea that you've always wanted to do and you've got the right team behind you to back you in it. It's, it's amazing. Like I, I've, you know, most of my life I've put in the 80 to a hundred hour work weeks, but now I'm just starting to shift into like living out my, my dream and just getting to be the creator, mm. just be an epic creator and like, and allow other people to do what they do and hand these things off. It also seems like you've done a really good job of, of building up uh, the brand of yourself as well. Um, you know, I noticed like social media, you have great following. Uh, your, your media kit was one of the, the best that we've seen. Can, can you talk a little bit about like behind the scenes? Like how did, how did you created that team and kind of uh, making sure that, you know, you're put in, in the right light as well? I've always spent on me, always spent mm -hmm. on me always invested in me. There's no better investment than you. Uh, I've always done masterminds. I've always invested in my social media, my branding, worked with, you know, even if I was at a company, I was still working on my personal brand. People take you more seriously. People look at you differently and you look at yourself differently if you have clarity around what it is you're passionate about and you can convey that message. I learned very early on, like when I was coming up with my dream supplements and I was at a company like Dimatize. And again, we were pushing for sale. And in three years we did to post for 425 million. I'd come up with all these cool supplement ideas. And if I couldn't market it to the marketing team, they wouldn't invest in it. They wouldn't make it real. So then I stopped working on just the formulation and trying to say, well, this is going to be really great. It's got these five ingredients. And I started thinking through what's the marketing story here? What's the hero's journey here? How can these ingredients work together? How is it different in a competitive set from everything else out there? And then I was building out competitive sets and I was building out the marketing and the branding and the story. And then they were buying into it. And I thought about myself in a very similar way. Like, like it's cool that I know what I'm doing for ingredients, for you know, the, the supplements and, and, and patents and all these things, that's great. But like people don't care unless you show them why they need to care. And I need to show them my hero's journey. They need to connect with me on a personal level. I've been through suicidal thoughts, depression, obesity, anorexia, orthorexia, autoimmune issues with Hashimoto's, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, Epstein-Barr virus. I've had a pituitary tumor and I've had self-loathing and just really battled myself for a long time. So I get it. Like, and that's how I connect with people. And then people want to connect with me because I'm a real person. I'm not just, it's just not transactional. And so uh, that's where people want to work with me and will pay a greater level because they connect with me as a human and, and they see my value more than just, again, transactional. And so that's, that's been so key for me along this path uh, is, is really investing in myself. And, that, and that's also created incredible networks too, like where I meet all these great people at these masterminds or, you know, at these uh, events that I go to that I, I spend the money. Like I, I've always just seen the return on investment if the investment is me. I think that's great advice for any young entrepreneur out there. You know, a lot of times they, they struggle with, everybody always says wherever you you read or listen that you need to get a mentor. And I think sometimes people struggle with like, well, what do you do? Walk down the street and knock on a rich guy's door and say, can you be my mentor? But the truth is, it's, it's stuff like you're talking about. Like when you go into these 
seminars and rooms, you end up meeting other successful people that you can brainstorm with and kind of have accountability partners and, and, you know, pick up mentors in those rooms. And I think, uh, I think it's really good advice for somebody listening out there that, you know, investing in yourself can really be, really be key. And, you know, part of it is too, like when you're talking about the, the first set of words that the guy said to you, and then the second set of words, um, I know for myself, the, the older I got, the more that I found out that, you know, sometimes there's two sets of voices in, in my own head. And, you know, how do you control the, the one side, you know, the, the kind of, you know, I build up a lot of these affirmations that I tell the, the negative side when it creeps in every once in a while, just to tell them, get the hell out of there, you know, but I think that's all, all just an important uh, step. So, you know, I, I think you're, you can just hear the honesty in your voice of how you're, how you're talking to the audience today. And I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. And, you know, that's such a great point about that inner critic or imposter mm. syndrome. I remember the, the first mastermind I went to with, uh, with Lewis Howes, uh, School of Greatness. And I walked in this room and all these people were making more than me or had a million followers and all this stuff. And, and I felt very overwhelmed walking in and I'm like, who am I to be here? Like at that time, I was like still a corporate formulator. I was working uh, with a company, Biotrust. And I was well known in the industry, but you know, I, I wasn't like this amazing entrepreneur. I hadn't had all the accomplishments yet and hadn't been on all the stages and all the things yet. And I felt very overwhelmed. And then I started hearing everyone else speak and realizing that everyone else here is scared too. Everyone else has imposter syndrome too, whether they have a million followers, $10 million, whatever it is, they have their fears too. And there's an insecurity that, that I think driven entrepreneurs have in common. We all like, if you don't feel imposter syndrome, then you're probably not successful or won't be. Like, I think like it, it, it clicked with me that it's like only successful people deal with imposter syndrome. You know, so it's like that, that, that clicked with me that, you know, don't worry about that. Like that's, you know, that, that fear can be a good fear that you can move through. And it just means you're challenging yourself. And there's two things that like Tim Ferriss, for example, with, with tools of Titans found that all these successful people he interviewed had in common, they all had a great morning routine and they were all great experimenters. They viewed things under the lens of like, you win or you learn, not you win or you fail. And which means you really, you win or you win. And if you start looking at things like that, then it really shifts like your, your perspective, your reality. Like Thomas Edison, like would say, it, that experiment wasn't a failure. Like now I know what it's not. So you're checking off that box and you're continuing down your path and you're that much closer to success. Yeah, I think that's that's the the takeaway there is you know that a lot of times people talk about you know what did you learn from your failures and I think you know like you're saying it it's not so much failures you just got to look at them like opportunities and and I think that's you know I always I always say that there's times when something goes wrong whether it's in my you know personal life or my my uh, business and and you know maybe it's four or five steps removed from myself and. I got to really dig deep. And that's usually when I get my dog out and we go for a walk and I'm starting, you know, I'll walk far, you know, maybe 45 minutes, hour and a half till I finally can get down to what I did wrong. Because a lot of times, you know, it's easy to blame everybody else. And I think, uh, you know, when you get to a certain point where you can really be honest with yourself and say, okay, this is where I went, went wrong, but um, you know, I won't do that again. And, you know, you learn from it and, and then you move on. I think you become a, a better entrepreneur, probably, you know, better um, person in general when you can really be honest with yourself. But it, it takes some some deep diving to to get to that point, I think, where when stuff that you're, you're talking about. Yeah, that's actually like one of the things that I like. I ended up doing a lot of plant medicine work in 2020 and it became a, a game changer of a year for me. And one of the things I learned was that I don't have to achieve and level up 
to get love. Like I was always yeah. thinking like, I'll, I'll be loved when I get to this level and I'll be successful when I get to this level. And that level never comes, no matter how much you keep leveling up. And I started realizing that all I have to do to, to get love is start giving it. Uh-huh. Be welcome, you know, welcome it in. But also for me, when I started realizing the power of sovereignty and how much control you do have over your life and how much your happiness is dictated by uh, your, your own individual self and your, your will. And that's when, when you stop pointing outwards and you stop blaming everyone else, you know, the whole thing, like when you point a finger, you have three pointing back or whatever. I mean, that's, that became powerful to me. I saw that I project out no matter what I do, I project out. And like, I don't know if you've read like the four agreements, like, you know, you can project out hurt, hurt people, like hurt people. Right. But also like loving people, love people. And you can project out. Like when you, when you say a compliment to someone, a lot of times that compliment is really about yourself. Um, so that you can tell a lot by, by someone and their willingness to accept what's theirs. And so much of our life really is ours. If you find yourself blaming other things externally all the time, you won't be successful either. I mean, you have to like, look at that as like, again, like give your, grant yourself some grace, talk, tell yourself that was an experiment too whatever that was, a business partner, a failed business, like a bad investment, that was an experiment. Now I'm learning. Now I'm moving forward. Now I'm adapting. There's this idea in science called uh, hormesis where like that agitation creates the adaptation. Like you essentially grow, like your, your body gets stronger from being exposed to viruses, <laughs> being exposed to, you know, stress, uh, in life, stress at the gym, you know, those things like you get stronger from that. And it's the same here. It's, it's, it's like a mindset called stoicism, um, where the obstacle is the way that's how you get stronger is by taking on those challenges. And you don't wish for a life with no obstacle, you don't wish for a shortcut around the obstacle, you wish for the challenge to create a stronger you. And with, with everything that you're doing, you know, it's, it sounds like you got so many moving parts to your operation and, and really, you know, the, everything that, that you've got going on. Like when people ask you the question, like, how do you handle everything? How do you keep everything afloat? How do you make sure that you're, you know, when you do go through adversity, how do you come out on the other side? Like what, what's your routines that really kind of define yourself? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And it's been built up over time. Like it's not something again, it's like this, this idea of hormesis or stoicism, just like going to the gym, like, you know, day one, you're not crushing it. Right. I mean, it's something that's, that's a muscle that you, as you use, you get better at over time. And so I added things over time through those experiments, through those hard lessons, but knowing that I'm granting myself that grace that this worked for me, this didn't work for me. Let me keep moving forward. And so things like morning and nighttime routines, I I mentioned before that morning routine was key. So how I get up in the morning, I do some breath work, I do some affirmations, I do some gratitude, I take the dog for a walk, I continue to fast, but I have my, my bulletproof style coffee with collagen and MCTs. And You know, I take that time to ease into the morning and have perspective versus, you know, and that, and that can only take you give yourself 15 minutes and that's going to be a game changer versus, you know, the alarm clock going off the cortisol and adrenaline going and you're rolling out of bed, you're late and then you're fighting traffic and, you know, you got the tunes going and you're, you know, you're feeling tired. And so you got like a Red Bull or coffee and, and you've got the, you know, the honey bun because you're, you know, you need the sugar to get you going. And then you get into work and you start going in your emails and you're buried and someone's, you know, barking at you to get things done. I mean, it's a very, like you can, 
That's why it's successful. People have that morning routine because it makes you feel like you're in control of your day. You start your day with a very different perspective and that sets a tone for your entire day. Instead of feeling buried or the day owning you, you can own the day. And if something comes up, something comes up, but you've already been successful at several points in your day, even if that one thing goes awry. So like that's, that's massive. And then in the evening, you need to have what they call like a sleep fortress where your bedroom revolves around sleep, not devices, not TVs, not any of that other, not lots of conversations. Uh, you know, it, it needs to be a place where sleep is the focus and, and it's held important. And so, you know, also having the proper sleep hygiene where you go to bed at the same time every night, or at least you try to, I mean, you can't always do that but you try to go to bed at the same time. When we do that thing on the weekends where we stay up two, three, four hours later, that's called social jet lag. To your body, it thinks that you're traveling, like going to France or something uh, on the weekends. And that's why you're feeling tired. You're, you're bucking what's called the circadian rhythm of your body with all the hormones and neurotransmitters that naturally release in such a way with like that, that uh, day, and night cycle, that sleep wake cycle. And so you're, you're, you're bucking that and, and creating havoc in your body. And you're, and that's why you feel so tired come Monday morning. If you can keep your body on its own natural rhythm, then that can help you feel more vibrant during the week. That's going to make a huge difference. I mean, they've shown just, you know, getting seven hours of sleep versus like six hours of sleep is, is incredible incredible difference in terms of your health. Like you have like a greater risk for cardiovascular disease, for diabetes, for all these things, if you're not getting enough sleep. What tips do you have for people that maybe were intrigued by the, the word sleep fortress? <laughs> uh, so several things like, I mean, obviously in my book, I go into it in depth, but like I would go with like a Manta sleep mask or get like blackout curtains, depending on like and you want to like eliminate LEDs in your room, like even like little uh, smoke detectors and devices and things like that have the LEDs. You can get little stickers to cover up the LEDs. Even little LEDs make a difference in your sleep quality. So what you want is full darkness when you're sleeping. Then I do believe that some people need like a white noise machine. Uh, when you have... Um, a colder bed, you actually sleep better and deeper. They make like something called a chili pad that you can sleep on, uh, or sometimes just having less blankets is a cheap hack for that. Uh, that's something to experiment with. Um, also, one of the most profound things that I can tell you, one of the best hacks for sleep, and this made a massive difference for me, is something called sleep tape. So literally taping your mouth you know, people have CPAP machines and, you know, these oral devices from dentists and all this stuff so that they don't have sleep apnea. And even if you're not apneic, just literally taping your mouth, we're meant to be nasal breathers, not mouth breathers. It will make a tremendous difference in the oxygenation of your tissues, including your brain and its recovery. And how you how you feel in the morning you can see if you have like some of these fitness trackers they they track something called hrv heart rate variability and you can see how recovered you are and i could literally get three three hours less sleep if i'm nasal breathing and still have a better hrv than when i'm mouth breathing it makes a massive massive difference when you nasal breathe so that is one of the best sleep hacks you can do and you don't have to do it forever. In time, your body actually gets trained to start breathing correctly through the nose. So that's something that you can look into. Yeah, I appreciate that. We always like to give the listeners some tips, and I think those are some, some useful ones for sure. So we appreciate that. You mentioned your, your new book. Would you uh, kind of tell our listeners what, what inspired you to write your new book and what your, your book and what the journey was, was like writing it and all about it? The journey was insane writing it. It took me over two years and I thought like, I'm just going to write a book because, you know, at first I thought 
if I'm an authority on stage and on TV, I need a book. And then I was like, well, I'll write about all the stuff that I talk to people about. So this makes sense. And I can tell my story in there. And I started writing it. And then I started going through some of these plant medicine journeys and, and working with therapists. In 2020, I had a massive shift. Like I was supposed to be traveling 300 days. I was working 80 hours a week. I was working on this book. And I thought I was leveling up again. But I did a plant medicine journey. And I had the shift on what love of self is. And then I then COVID happened and my 300 days of travel went to zero. And then I started really looking at mentors like you were talking about. I started and mentoring. That's one of the most important factors, by the way, with people that say they're looking for a mentor and trying to find one, start mentoring yourself. Like talking, well, I mean, one, having the right voice to yourself is important with affirmations, but two, mentor other people. That's massive. Um, and then, um, for me, you know, working with therapists, doing like Byron Katie style work, uh, which is, you can literally go to the work.com that profoundly changed like my perspective on how I'm, uh, how I'm approaching what I do and, and being lit up again by what I do. I had let too many things come in to overwhelm me and I was getting away from my passions. And this book was starting to become a dream. And I ended up rewriting the book about three different times. I even recorded it in LA once, finished, done. And then I ended up rewriting it more. And I went from what I felt like was a B when I read it to an A plus now, like it's now where I want it to be. But it's because I was shifting so much in 2020. And for me, People say it was a, a terrible year. Like for me, that was a year that I got a full reset button without having to have a heart attack or cancer or, you know, a reason that my whole world stops. Like I'm so thankful that 2020 happened for me uh, that, I, that I got that reset button. And that allowed me to make the book exactly what I wanted it to be. It allowed me to reshape my life the way I wanted it to be in a way that would have been difficult. I was just too busy otherwise. And what's the name of the book? It's called The Energy Formula. And uh, it's really, it has all biohacks, health optimization. It goes through supplements, all the doses and forms you should use. It goes through, like I said, sleep and morning routines, exercise hacks, things like high intensity interval training, blood flow restriction, uh, different types of nutrition. So. Uh, intermittent and extended fasting, keto, paleo, Mediterranean, all kinds of stuff. The labs that you should be ordering with your doctor. Uh, it's, it's very uh, extensive and exhaustive. It has about 70 diagrams. It's, it's amazing. And you mentioned that it comes out in, in April, correct? Yeah, April 1st. Uh, you can go to energyformula.com. I have a a fasting guide that comes uh, as a bonus and a hidden chapter on natural movement. And uh, I'm super proud of it. It really does tell my story, some of which I told you, but I go into depth about um, all of it, all the, the health journeys that I've had, the, the bullying that I've been through and coming through the other side of it and how I'm still working on getting better every day. I think you made a good point earlier too about, you know, uh, why to write the book that you know, you're an authority figure already and, you know, why not have a book? I think what you're going to see once uh, April rolls past and you, you start to get in a few months of promoting the book that, you know, it's it's crazy once you write a book where the, the journey takes you. And I think for anybody out there that's, you know, wanting to be an industry leader, I think the best thing you can do is write a book because, you know, the, the business cards are kind of old fashioned. I mean, nobody even really hands them out, you know, I know if someone hands me one, I just take a picture, put it in my phone. But you know, when, when you find out somebody wrote a book, it, it, it's, you just, it's kind of like what you said earlier, when people start to, to look different at you, um, you know, and that's another time where they start to, to look different at you is when they find out that um, you have a book. And I think uh, you're going to love this journey. The, the hardest part is definitely the, the writing and the editing of it. And then, you know, the promotion is, is um, the fun part and then seeing the, the rewards, they come out of nowhere. So I think uh, you're, you're gonna really be great in 2021 to see where that brings you. 
I'm Thank excited you. for you there. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what else maybe we haven't touched on that you feel like you, you'd really want our listeners to know? There's so many, you know, I feel like sometimes we get some people on that just have uh, such a vast knowledge of, of um, ideas and, and just life experiences that they can really just help our audience. And it seems like you're one of those people that's, that's really been very successful in business and very successful on the, on the side of the biochemist. Like, I'm not real sure if we've had a biochemist on before and somebody who really understands uh, health and fitness. So I'm just really excited, you know, give you a moment to kind of take it where, where you'd like to take it. You know, and I can get into some ingredients and some of the hacks and all that, but what I found in this in, in 2020, like I was referring to, I was biohacking. I was using all the supplements so I could push harder, go further, do more. And the whole time I didn't realize how much I had what they call body dysmorphia. I didn't like my body. I didn't like who I was. I, I was hurting inside, like, like so many entrepreneurs that are, that are living with trauma and, and, and they're so competitive and driven and pushing and they don't realize why. And so doing that inner work, doing that healing, because that, that voice, that inner voice, that inner critic, if anyone talked to you like you talked to you, you wouldn't be their friend. And for me to like work through that and change that voice to something positive, to something encouraging, then it started changing the people that ended up around me. Like you want to be in that room where you have that amazing mentor. It's like I'm saying, well, be that mentor to someone else. You know, you want someone to treat you amazingly well, well, treat yourself that well. And everything starts changing and falling into place. You can manifest that. Like I like manifest, like I think people think it's like some woo thing, like the secret. But I believe that you're in the right place in the right time all the time. You're just heads down. You're 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 doing the hustle and grind Gary V thing, which I think is bullshit. Like that's a terrible way to live your life when you're grinding and you're hurting and you're heads down and pieces are breaking off and there's heat building up like that's grinding it's what they call like the i mean it hustles the sympathetic nervous system state grind would be ultra sympathetic and there's no room for what's called the parasympathetic state the yin to the yang like where you like parasympathetic is rest and digest and sympathetic is is fight or flight or freeze and we're just in this fight or flight state all the time, pushing ourselves, pushing ourselves, grinding, heads down, keep going. You can push through it. You can hate your entire life. It'll be worth it eventually. And it's not. It's not. You need to find what lights you up. You need to go from hustle and grind to hustle and flow. You need to hit the flow states where you're, you're passionate, where you're excited about what you do, where you're in your creative zen. And that is ideal. And that's, that's been a game changer for me is to, to change the voices in my head and start projecting out where I want to be, what I want to do, showing up as that person and not waiting for, again, that external force to come in, that savior from somewhere else. I'm, that, I'm the one. I'm the force. I'm the one that's making my life suck or I'm the one that's making my life great. You want to be happy? You can be happy right now. If you choose to be, just choose to be, that's it. Like start making those choices, start changing your life right now and be happy. And if there's things around you that are, that are draining you, if there's zombies and vampires, people that are, you know, zombies are, are, you know, the, the brain dead people around you that have no, no thought, no interaction, they have no direct value. Like, or there's people that are energy vampires that are just draining you of, of your well being. You're wasting time on these people. You know, surround yourself. You're the product of the five people around you. So surround yourself with amazing people and invest into them. That's, they won't stick around long if you're not investing into them. You want them to invest into you. You need to invest into them. You need to show up for them. And like I said, the most important thing is you show up for yourself. And that sets the bar for how people will treat you. You think people are always treating you like crap? It's because you treat you like crap. 
Yeah, I, I think uh, some profound words there for, for sure. Something else that you you mentioned a little earlier that that I want to come back around to is you casually mentioned uh, the eighty hour work weeks that you put in. Um, I'm assuming for years, um, you, you know, and I always have a special place in my heart for for the guys who work 80, 90, 100 hours, uh, whatever it takes. You know, can you share some of your your tips? I'm curious, um, you know, with your background, like your tips for staying fresh during those those uh, periods of time. And I know um, I, I'm just curious, like what? when you work through there, was there always like a, a end in sight? You knew like, hey, in six months I can take some time or was it after this project or what was, what's the keys like for somebody to stay healthy and um, and not burn out during that those times where I really believe that there's only certain ways that you can really achieve um, great victories. And some of it is you have to put the time in and, you know, with, in short periods too, I think when you, you really focus your energy and really work really hard at, at something, um, you know, on the other side, it comes out really well. But I think the other part is you got to make sure that when you get out to the other side, that there's something left of you. So you the, that's, that's it. Yeah. That's it. And, and I drove myself into the ground many times doing that. And I had many health scares doing that. So, I mean, for the times that it, it's definitely, I mean, it's worked for me. I'm, I am where I am and I'm, and I'm blessed to be here. And it's all served me and I have zero regrets on any of it. And to your point, I definitely had some lessons along the way of like what worked, what didn't. I think you need to create, like you said, you can't go long term and just grind. You need to create like short term goals, short term wins and keep building on those where you celebrate those wins, where you have something that's in sight that you can reach and then keep keep going to the next thing. But you need to like take the time to actually celebrate it so that you believe yourself to keep going to the next one. Like otherwise, like you're you're just continually lying to yourself like a bad friend, like, yeah, yeah, like we're we're almost there. Like, you know, keep going. It's another five miles up the road. And then, you know, you're 30 miles away from your house and you're like, when am I gonna drop this guy off? I mean, that's the same thing. Like you could be lying to yourself like that. You need to like when you when you get to these wins celebrate them and then keep going and i think that's it's it's an important mindset to have like where they talk about uh if you love what you do you'll never work a day in your life it can't always be a grind so you have to find something you love in it and you have to make it an achievable goal yeah i think there's so many you know it's so many things out there that you hear all the time that it's become very popular about the grind and the hustle like you said, and, and, um, you know, whenever I would use those words, if I'm, if I'm doing an interview myself, it's like, well, I was grinding before it was cool to grind, you know, and it was, I was hustling before it was cool to hustle. Like, because I think there's, there's that mantra out there now that, that, um, you have, you need all these side hustles and, and everything else. But I really think it just comes down to a lot of what you said, that if there's people out there listening, if you're really trying to figure out what your tipping point is or how do you get to the next next level or really become successful it, it really goes back with loving yourself taking care of yourself um, enjoying yourself um, building yourself up to to with somebody that you really you really love that you love yourself because you can take on everything at the end of the day when you lay down your your head if it's in your sleep fortress and, and you kind of you know that, that you're happy with who you're who you're going to bed with who you're falling asleep with like that's I don't know you can get up and tackle any problem there is you know any and rise to any challenge and you know meet any goal that you make for yourself if you really have developed those systems over time where where you love yourself and I, th I think it's um you know when you get the people on that that really get it it it, it seems to always go back to kind of this conversation I just really appreciate uh, kind of where the conversations went, Sean. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you giving me the ability to do that and, and letting our conversation move organically through that with the things that light me up and I really want to talk about and connect with your listeners on. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Where can people get more of you if they want to get more of you, Sean? Uh, SeanWells.com, S-H-A-W-N-W-E-L-L-S. 
and also at Sean Wells on Instagram. I've been doing some clubhouse lately uh, at biohacking. If anyone's on that, uh, I enjoy clubhouse and, uh, and then my book. So energyformula.com, um, check it out. It's a 99 cent presale for the ebook and uh, it's a 39.99 hardcover, but it literally cost me 39.80 is it's all full color it's it's amazing you'll you'll love the book it will change your life and like i said i've got the bonuses that include the fasting guide for energy the hidden chapter on movement uh i've got some q and a's that i'm doing with people so a bunch of free stuff too um yeah everything i do is really about helping others and changing health because i've been through hell personally and this isn't where I make my money. So I'm giving these away as best I can because I just want them in people's hands. No, we really appreciate that for sure. I think the, the listeners appreciate that as well too. You, you mentioned Clubhouse and I guess, you know, because it's so fresh, I, I just figure maybe I ask, you know, what, what's your takeaways from it so, so far? And do you have any uh, tips out there for anybody that's, that's getting on there trying to build an audience or anything like that? Yeah, I think uh, spending some time on your bio is really important. While people are in these clubhouse rooms and you're up on stage speaking, they'll be checking your bio. They'll be scrolling through. There's nothing to look at in terms of video. So while they're listening to you, they're, they're flipping through your bio. So have your bio be amazing. And also the keywords that are in the bio come up in the search. So yes, they can search for your name, but anything that's in your bio will come up and search as well. So have your bio be chock full of a bunch of great search terms. Uh, obviously have it linked to, you can link it to your Twitter and your Instagram and people will even go over to Instagram while you're talking. And I've gotten direct messages from that. And then obviously come to the clubhouse with something of value. You listen to the other speakers, I like for it to be exactly like a panel is at a conference. Like I've been at you know, scientific conferences, business conferences, where I've been up on stage and there's me with three, four, five, six other speakers. And we are all up on stage and we're discussing a topic, a question gets asked and we all kind of give our point and counterpoint. And that's really interesting to the listener versus just one person lecturing. I know for me, like I always love the panel. So this can be fun in Clubhouse if you let it be that kind of interaction with the other speakers. So enjoy the other speakers, listen to the other speakers. Listening is one of the most powerful skills there is. The most successful people are great listeners, not great talkers. They're great listeners. You can't really be saying a whole lot of value if you've not been listening. Yeah, well, well said for sure. I think um, I've enjoyed my time on Clubhouse as well, too. I think, you know, there's been times where I've been up on stage and there's times where I'm just talking. And I, I think, um, you know, there's just so so many interests in there. You could kind of find wherever, whatever you kind of want to take. And um, the other part is, is you never know who's going to show up in the rooms, which is pretty cool, you know. And then just the, the insight to some people that are... Uh, you know, uber successful too. I mean, it, it's really, really neat to get in there with, with people that you see maybe on TV or whatever it is. And, and they're talking to, you know, about what their goals they are or, and how do they formulate them. And it's, it's just neat. So I think uh, it's, a, it's another platform for people to get out there and, and kind of make the most of it for sure. I agreed. Yeah. I've really enjoyed it. And, and I feel like now more than ever, you know, it's, it's less difficult than live streaming, like where you might be on video and people have to watch that video with clubhouse. I'm finding people are like listening throughout the day, like when they're at work and then they can jump in what's cool and ask questions. You know, they can be part of that, of that, uh, stage. They can, they can move up from the audience to the stage and that's cool too. So it's, it's been fun. It's interactive. I've met a lot of people through it and I'm definitely enjoying it. That's great. Sean, now it's time that we solve the equation to your success. Are you ready for seven rapid fire questions? Let's go. Bring okay. It. 
best seminar or teaching you've ever been to? Wow, best seminar or teaching I've ever been to. Um, whew. I'm going to say, uh, just going to my first mastermind, probably that one that I mentioned with Lewis Howes, because now I've been in about 10 different masterminds. And that is definitely leveling up when you get around incredible people doing amazing things and you get to be in that network and you get them as mentors and you help them and they help you. Uh, it's one of the most powerful tools I've, I've been a part of. And I would encourage all your listeners to join a mastermind, even something like uh, EO entrepreneurs online, something like that. Like they don't have to be expensive. Um, they can be upwards of a hundred grand, but they can be 500 bucks too. And just get going, get in a group and start interacting. Favorite item you bought recently under a hundred bucks. Hmm. Um, I'm going to say supplement. It's going to be a supplement. I'll go with that. Uh, my favorite supplement is dihydroberberine. Uh, it's an anti-aging ingredient that's more powerful than metformin. Uh, it's under the brand name Glucovantage. So that would be the one I'd, I'd recommend. Did you formulate it? I did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I had to ask that question. Name an idol or hero of yours that you met in person. Uh, probably the biggest one is Matt Damon. That was really cool. Uh, I got to meet Matt Damon at a, it's called a black carpet event in Las Vegas for uh, the Bourne movie, the last Bourne movie, the fourth one. And he was incredibly nice. I got to meet him in a, in a sushi restaurant and we hung out for a while. And, uh, and he remembered my name when we were talking and I just remembered how passionate he was about his, his charity and he was just a great guy. And that really set the bar for me that you don't need to be a jerk just because you're popular, good looking and, and rich and famous. Favorite book to give as a gift? The Four Agreements absolute game changer in my life something you do every morning talk kindly to myself your personal mantra or favorite quote uh, grant yourself grace i think we are relentlessly hard on ourselves. place you go to decompress and rest bed again sleep fortress like i feel like people are laying around on couches people are people are using uh other places that should be for uh fun for sleep and then not having the bedroom be for sleep and you know using that as a place to look at devices watch tv get amped up have arguments that's all wrong so for me my bedroom is my sleep fortress that's where I go to sleep and relax. Sean, thank you so much for being on today. We really appreciate it. It was a great conversation and best of luck to you with the book. Thank you so much, Nick. I really enjoyed this. Appreciate it.